Many dagboards for the Raspberry Pi are used with simple acrylic housing or even no housing at all. The NanoSound 1 is the result of integrated design of both a dagboard and a compact and sleek aluminium housing. The result is a very nice looking little streamer with optionally an internal SSD drive. It even plays CDs if you like at a small additional cost. For the housing nano mesher, the company that produces nano sound products partnered up with Argon that already had a very nice housing for general use of the Raspberry Pi 4B. They made a version to hold the new DAC board specially designed by nano mesher for this project. But let's first see how it is to be used. The analog outputs on the rear of the nano sound 1 are connected to analog inputs on your amplifier for instance the AUX or CD input. The amplifier is of course connected to your loudspeakers. The NanoSound 1 is then connected to your network over a network cable or Wi-Fi. You can now play music from the internet like from internet radio stations or streaming services you are subscribed to like Spotify, Tidal or Cobus. There are no controls on the NanoSound 1 except for the power button on the rear. All other functions are controlled over a smartphone, tablet or computer using either an app or your browser. If you have stored music on your computer that can be played too provided you have a computer switched on, connected to the network and have shared the volume that holds the music. The housing of the NanoSound 1 has an aluminium top half that doubles as a heatsink. The lower part is of semi-transparent plastics. It measures only 106 by 95 by 31 mm and weighs 225 grams excluding the Woolworth power supply. Through the lower part of the front three LEDs can be seen, when lighted of course. The left green one shows read and write actions. The second green one shows the power status while the blue LED on the right shows there is audio activity. On the rear we find a USB-C connector that acts as a power input with left of that the power button. That lets you switch on and off like a normal sized computer. Below that a micro HDMI connector that can output video depending on the operating system installed. For Lumio is advised and then there is no relevant video information. Furthermore we see the analog outputs on RCA connectors and the connectors on the Raspberry Pi 4B. 2 times USB 2, 2 times USB 3 and a network connector. Optionally a higher bottom part can be chosen that can hold the M.2 SSD drive. This is connected over a bridge connector to the Pi's bottom USB 3 connector. When we look at the high bottom part we see the USB connector that holds the lower part of the bridge connector. The M.2 connector holds a small stick like M.2 drive. There are four lengths and they all can be used. Let's insert the longest version, in this case a 1TB Samsung Evo drive. The NanoSound DAC board on one side holds the voltage regulation using a low dropout regulator. The oblong hole in the board is for an aluminium extrusion inside the housing that using thermal pads on the processor of the Pi provide passive cooling. A small Nuvoton microprocessor does some householding. The other side of the board shows us the infrared sensor, the blue LED for audio activity and the Burr Brown PCM5122 DAC chip. In the NanoSound 1 this chip does PCM up to 192 kHz 24 bit sampling. The board is mounted in the top half of the housing with the blue LED hanging down and the multipin connector on the GPIO connector of the Raspberry Pi. And since we are here, see the nice board that leads the HDMI connector to the rear of the unit. Back to the GPIO bus for it is doubled in such a way that it is available from the outside after removing a magnet held lid. There even is a full legend next to it. Although you can buy the NanoSound 1 without the Raspberry Pi installed, I would advise you to buy it as a complete system. 
If you don't, there is a manual in the box with instructions for assembly and software installation. After that is done, you just shortly press the power button on the rear. To control the NanoSound 1, you do need a smartphone, tablet or computer. There is a Volumio app for iOS and Android, although you could also use your internet browser and type volumio.local in the address bar. In either case you get this user interface. The background can be changed to any picture you like provided it has usable resolution. Or you can change it to a solid color like this. The instruction manual tells you to install the NanoSound plugin. To do this go to plugins in the left column, click miscellanea, scroll down and install NanoSound 1. I already installed it as can be seen here. I also installed Rune Bridge so it can be used as renderer for Rune systems. And when we go to sources you will see that I have added the Syn3T NAS. Some people have problems linking to NASes, so I'll give some hints. First make sure that your NAS is set to Samba sharing protocol, often called SIFS. Then enter an alias, the NASes IP address, the path to the share that holds the music and set file share type to SIFS. Depending on how you have configured the share that holds your music, you might need to enter a username and password to get access. When you save this all, you might get an error message. In that case, enter verse is 2.0 in the options field. That worked in my case when adding shares from Synology NASIS and my Rune Rock server. If you need support, don't ask me, but go to the Volumio community. The link is in the comment below this video in YouTube. You have seen I installed the Rune Endpoint plugin, but it can also work as UPnP renderer, Apple Airport renderer, DLNA browser, accept Bluetooth input and with a PEDA plugin, even play and rip CDs. Digital and analog inputs are also supported by Volumio, but not by the NanoSound 1. For Tidal, Cobus and hi res Audio you need a My Volumio account and a subscription to the streaming service of your choice. There are free plugins for Spotify and Spotify Connect, again a subscription is needed. Volumio further has the paid option of facilitating playback and ripping of CDs using an optical USB drive. Ripping to the NAS is only one press of a soft button away. Although I used my iPad for remote control, the NanoSound comes with a simple infrared remote. Here again the NanoSound 1 surprised me, for it sounds good taking in account the price. I replaced the low quality power supply for an iFi iPower 5V that cost 49 US dollars and that further improves the sound quality. The result is a stressless sound with for its class a wide and deep stereo image. Sibilance is rather well controlled and I found hardly other serious jitter related artefacts. Perhaps a stable aluminium housing gives so much mechanical stability that the clock crystal suffers less from microphony. Sound wise it places itself in the low end of my setup too. For a streamer priced just below 200 US dollars the sound quality is rather good. Spend 50 dollars on the better iFi iPower supply and you gain 100 dollars in sound quality. Tick all the boxes including the CD playback, a CD player, the M.2 SSD extension and a 1 terabyte western digital SSD stick and you still only pay 440 dollars. All dollar prices are excluding sales tax and at the current exchange rate these prices correspond with the same amount in euros including VAT, the European sales tax. Volumio is a very fine software that is well maintained and grows in popularity with many manufacturers. You might use other software if you like, but it needs to support the NanoSound 1 DAC. All in all this is a very fine and versatile network player that lets you use UPnP, DNA, AirPlay, Bluetooth and Rune while offering its own player too. Subscribing to my Volumio lets you use it with other Volumio players in up to six different rooms, sharing the catalogue. 
As said, it also brings automatic metadata addition. Which brings me to the end of this video. I love to see you back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time in a new video. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel and follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you like to support my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>